thank you everyone. I'm very, very pleased to see so many people join in person and um, so many people join online and whoever will be watching uh, our record session um, after the meetup. I'm very, very happy to see all of you. Today, um, after some of the uh, delay and uh, having no possibility to meet in person, we finally um, get it sorted and we're finally here and uh, happy to talk about the modern classical cryptography. So today I'm presenter Marina Levy, a PhD in cryptography and uh, my talk, um, well our talk, um, I've got a co-author, uh, this is Aksana Trushina, she is a PhD in cryptography as well and currently data science in uh, one of the UK advertising company, she joined online and Aksana will be helping me when I will just um, have a pause and uh, happy to answer the questions after the presentation. So the presentation today is about uh, post-quantum cryptography and about the standards um, which is currently NIST, um, the standardization uh, project authority uh, working actively on. So the first question uh, we'll discuss uh, is uh, why, why we're talking about that, why is it uh, important and why we all need to think about post-quantum cryptography and the standards. How we can do that and what is the process, what are the candidates uh, for the uh, standard to be after, uh, after the whole process will be finalized and what are the next steps after that. So the, um, why do we need it? Well, um, obviously a lot of researchers worked on uh, that and um, lots of uh, people, you know, need to have a nice discussion at the coffee point and that's why we have this meetup. <laughs> um, but there is one small uh, reason down there. It says that there is, it looks like there is some progress uh, with the quantum computing. Just to demonstrate, um, this is just uh, AWS uh, account for, you know, j just to the classical use. If you have access to the AWS, you might never notice uh, that there is one service which is currently supplied by the uh, Amazon Web Services, and it does called Quantum Technologies. By clicking on it, you're going to this interesting providers, one of the provider D-Wave. In the quantum research um, area, it's a very old, like a classical company who started the research back in the beginning of 2000s and did significant progress. As of today, you can use the um, one of the uh, compute uh, area which is provides you more than 5,000 qubits. It's not that cheap, it's not um, always uh, super reliable, like you will not uh, use it for, you know, uh, for something like a load enterprise system which is, um, uh, needs a load balancer or something, but it is exceptional computational facilities and feature you can use. And everyone who has access to the AWS, at least in the, our APAC region, uh, can, can do that. So what does it mean uh, for our classical cryptography? Uh, it means actually that um, whoever had access to this um, uh, computational power can use the quantum computer pretty much implementing algorithms like Shore or similar, which helps to um, run the processes in parallel. And on some point, they will be able to easily hack the classical uh, crypto system we're using today. So when you're using browser, when you're using um, your emails, when you just use any app on your phone, on the laptop, you do use uh, behind the scenes the TLS and the SSL, which is using classical uh, cryptography. So all of these classical algorithms, which we rely on the decades on, become just not strong. Um, just after 
after this uh, quantum computer. Uh, in Australia, in uh, University of New South Wales, if you were, um, there is a quantum computing department uh, who actually building uh, one of the cells based on the vacuum, which is slightly different from what D-Wave does, because they focus on the uh, optical technologies. Uh, in any way, whenever, like, if we, if we think about the quantum computing in being in 2005, it was something which we talk some of the futuristic feel, right? It was something which will happen sometime in the future. Today in 2022, you can log in in AWS and you can get access to the pretty much quantum computer grid. That's why it is more than important for the whole um, whole people on the earth to make sure that we are using strong uh, algorithms and we do have a standard we can rely on. So NIST, um, let me show you the timeline. They started to talk and start to uh, think about the new uh, standards in 2016, like really, really seriously. Like lots of researchers, lots of organizations sit down together and said like, all right, we need to start to choose the algorithm which will be strong um, in the post-quantum era. And uh, this algorithm uh, we, we, we need to make sure we're using the right one, right? We need to make sure it's a strong in the classical understanding of the algorithm. We need to make sure that sure, uh, sure, sure algorithms and um, any type of the algorithms we're using um, on the quantum computers will not be able to break it. And it will be useful. It will be not too slow, so performance will be all right. It will use the... Uh, good size key, it will be not too big, and we can implement it well, right? And in the implementation, as you can see um, later on, it's not only the code, it's not only reliable libraries which will be shared with everyone, it is implementation and hardware as well. So, as you can see, we are somewhere here, a little bit, um, yeah, so the latest news were uh, published um, in July uh, 5th, 2022, and was announced the finalist uh, of, uh, of this competition. Let me return back to... So here is the list um, of all type of the algorithms and crypto systems which should be strong against the um, attack using the quantum computers. Those uh, who have been submitted uh, or discussed during all these three stages which we had since 2017 and 16 uh, till today uh, on the, all the post-quantum uh, conferences. So the first one, and it's one of the strongest uh, family of uh, algorithms, it is uh, lattice-based uh, algorithms. Um, another one is a code-based one, and when I'm talking about code, I'm referring to the uh, correction uh, error codes, error correction codes, uh, hash-based for signatures, uh, digital signatures only, and equations over the final field, which is which is kind of um, a bit mixed with the uh, code code based systems. So let's have a look next. Um, when we had all this long process of choosing the strong uh, system, um, the NIST and like the whole organization who's trying to choose the standard, um, they ask everyone. And of course, it's a very <laughs> tricky, a bit of a philosophical question whether the crypto system um, is strong or not. Because if we don't know that there is a successful attack on it, or we tried the uh, 
just just a brute force we cannot say for sure we cannot prove that the system is actually strong and that's why each time when we're talking we're saying like all right there are a few structural um, attacks which has been uh, proposed the computational um, difficulties of those attacks is quite high if you compare with the current uh, computational power of the uh, what, what we have in the earth and that's how we define as of today um, whether the uh, uh, crypto system uh, is strong or not so the gray one they've been unfortunately not chosen they lose on the sum of the rounds it does mean that someone suggests the structural um, uh, structural um, attack which worked or the implementation of the algorithm itself which has been submitted and it includes everything it includes the way how it has been written it includes what parameter you choose so the algorithm itself can be strong enough but the parameter was chosen the wrong way anyway they had been submitted and you cannot you know roll back in this all the process because it does take a lot of time it takes years uh, so, um, yeah, so those, um, those uh, type of the uh, crypto system, which is in gray, they unfortunately didn't go, didn't make it uh, become a finalist. So who, who did uh, and who become a finalist? So uh, one of the biggest, uh, biggest, uh, strongest type of the systems, as I said, that's a uh, uh, lattice based um, crypto system. Uh, and this is the just uh, explanation of how the classical lattice-based uh, crypto system for the digital, uh, sorry, not for the digital, um, for the uh, public key crypto system does work. The main idea, the main high-level idea, we do have um, this um, this equation and. We just get we just get this uh, this matrix um, set of equations uh, trying to get uh, define to define the x. The way how I can uh, transcript it in my mind because I just want to visual everything right. <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> look the like like you can try to approach the way. Um, you just do, you know, the linear al algebra. But the way I can see it, so if you have the grid, and um, you just need to, you just need to find the vector or the dot in the uh, n-dimensional space, which is will be closer uh, as possible to the defined random dot, which is not on the grid, but at the same time belongs to the grid. Aksana, do you want to uh, correct me or add something? It's okay. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so this is another uh, another system. They both called crystal. One is the crystal. Um, I don't know what's the correct pronunciation. They then Kiber. <laughs> or crystal um, dilithium. Uh, the dilithium one is um, a similar uh, approach with a, uh, just a lattice-based uh, system which is used uh, for the digital signature. So we're doing absolutely the same. We do uh, solve the uh, matrix e equations and the the main advantage of the system as we can see it, and again, as no one proved the opposite, is that even if we're using a lot of, um, uh, if we're using uh, the uh, quantum computer and we are able to do in parallel a lot of computation, it does not provide us benefit when we're trying to implement the structural uh, attacks on that. Okay. Marina, yep. There are two people in the way. Yep. Okay. Thank you for how I can. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Uh, whoever joined recently, 
we are in the, in the middle of the first talk, <laughs> but I hope you will enjoy uh, another talk. So um, this is another uh, another um, finalist, uh, the system which is called uh, Falcon. Uh, it is a short uh, lattice based pretty much um, system. So the difference uh, between the uh, crystal one that we know some of the answer, we know some of the uh, vector, uh, which is um, already defined, but it's a long uh, enough and we need to find the um, short one. So this is the strength uh, of, of the system uh, that you can potentially guess the uh, long vector, the right answer, which will be like quite big, but um, no, knowledge of that does not give us an uh, easy way to find the most optimal, the, the, the smallest one. Um, I need to click. Uh, another uh, type of the crypto systems, um, and this is the scheme for the uh, digital signature, which they call, I think, Sphinx, I don't know. <laughs> Um, it does depends on uh, the trees of the hash. So they pretty much makes very, very complicated um, uh, algorithm using multiple times the same hash algorithm, uh, which just increase the complexity uh, of the calculation of the digital uh, signature. As of today, again, um, there is no successful um, attack on it. Well, it doesn't mean that we cannot, you know, uh, work like, uh, we just need to maybe wait uh, until the, some of the audience here or <laughs> somewhere in the world will try to uh, hack them. Personally, um, I think, um, and uh, you're very welcome not to agree with me, I think that just increasing complexity uh, will not, uh, like in future, benefit uh, us a lot. And the great example for that is death and triple death, uh, which bo both not uh, strong enough, it's just a matter of time. Uh, but this uh, system, anyway, uh, become, one of the, become one of the finalists. So what about uh, next step, uh, how we can use and um, the companies like uh, Amazon and IBM, they actually started to use it already. And uh, as you saw uh, in AWS, you can use um, the quantum computing <laughs> uh, today. So you cannot use uh, for your uh, cloud infrastructure as of now uh, those algorithms but on the back end uh, both company claimed that for their purposes they actively using those implementation implementation sorry um, and uh, they just pretty much testing so they do contribute as well as google does um, so um, in, in, in this uh, standardization process. Um, here, a couple of questions. Um, so how we will deal with it and uh, what, what will happen when uh, NIST will have a finally um, the standard for us as a new crypto system. Uh, that will be a bit of uh, hard. That will be a bit of cow's hell for us because um, as <laughs> for us, especially people who does work um, in the uh, security operations and uh, need to, you know, uh, follow up and make sure all the uh, existing enterprise system uh, starting to use the um, new standards. It will be not very easy to move uh, to that. And I will suspect that uh, most of the system internally with a, you know, uh, with another co security controls in place will continue to use um, not strong algorithms, uh, but it does take a time and we pretty much looking forward to the December this year for the, uh, the uh, conference which is NIST organized uh, to see how they propose it, how they propose the whole world <laughs> to start to use the new algorithms. That's, that's all from my end. Um,